The quality management or QM matrix is an ideal tool to really capture which standards you put in place and how do you really make sure that they are being performed the way you want in your organization. Hello, I'm Tom. Welcome to my channel where we talk about continuous improvement in an industrial setting. And today's video is about the quality management or QM matrix. Some people call it the quality maintenance matrix. It's as you want. The thing is, this is not a tool to get into what are my quality points, uh, what are my critical control points, stuff like that. It's also really not a root cause analysis tool at all. And that's why I feel that quite often it's sort of forgotten in the, in the whole Lean Six Sigma continuous improvement mindset. But this is quite a good tool within the whole TPM type of structure, the total productive maintenance, where you make sure that what you decide, so all the, all the knowledge, all the better standards, all the decisions that you uh, discover, that, that you really draw from those wonderful improvement themes, root cause analyses, uh, everything that you improve in your processes is also captured and then managed as a quality standard. And this is not just about you know, the taste or the, uh, the look and feel of your product. This is basically about all of the standards that you put into your factory. And what do we put into the quality management matrix? That is, well, it starts with the standard itself. So what are we actually trying to describe here? For instance, the temperature of the sealing iron on my packaging machine. And then that is in the area of uh, assembly on uh, line B. Um, and this is just so that you can afterwards make sure you know, what am I trying to uh, fix, uh, in what area, what line, and uh, you can expand this a bit and I would advise you to do so. Um, and take you know, categories, type of metadata that is uh, logical for your factory, for your organizational setup. And this is so that you can afterwards easily uh, search for the points that you have uh, and also you know, find them, check for uh, completeness uh, and just you know, make sure that you know what you're talking about. And then the value itself. It should be uh, 180 degrees centigrade and, and it can be between minus 5 and plus 10 degrees based on that. And maybe you also put in here that um, there is a correlation of half a degree centigrade per two seconds of the speed of the foil going through, through or something like that. That's, the value can be more than just one number and it almost always has at least also the target and the range. But this again, this is describing what you uh, discovered uh, and so what your standard is. And, and this really also already goes into what is my standard. Now that for many people is sort of enough. It, it's everything you need to fix about your standard, put it into some instruction document and we're done. The whole idea of getting uh, it into the QM matrix is that we also check how good is our standard, we'll come to that, and where do you store it, and we'll also come to that. So this becomes sort of the central uh, repository for the settings information and the, the quality parameter information in your factory. And what you want to do is you want to capture all of those values that you determined for all the lines and for all the standards and uh, sort of get them into one big table because this will be sort of a master document from your uh, quality technology side uh, from which you populate all the instructions and uh, the, the small reminders on the machines, the uh, certifications that you have, the set points. So this, this whole uh, sphere of documentation that you use to make sure that it is in place, it sort of draws its data from this matrix. Th this is your, your central place to store all that knowledge that, that you uh, get and constantly update through root cause analysis, process analysis, uh, FMAs, and you get it in here. Now then, another very good part to include, and, and this is something we've talked about, they are the five questions for zero defects. So you judge the stability of that standard. Is it easy to set? Is it, uh, will it move away from its setting? Is it then easy to detect when it moves away? Uh, is it easy to detect any uh, problem products resulting from a bad setting? And are they then again easy to adjust? Stuff like that. Uh, and 
you know, go and uh, check out my video on the five questions with zero defects for uh, the different types of questions that you get. You know, a machine setting has a slightly different way of phrasing exactly those five questions than a material setting. So uh, the, the thickness of, um, of a foil layer, that is a material setting. You will check it in a slightly different way than the temperature of the ceiling plate. Um, but like this, you immediately get a very good overview of where are your very stable, but also where are your not so stable uh, standards that you use in your factory, which usually leads to you know, the, the quality pillar or at least the quality department, your continuous improvement teams wanting to focus in on that. Um, not because it creates problems right now, but to prevent future problems. So you get that nice balance of making your system a bit better. For that, you need to know where the weak points are. Wonderful way to show that. And of course, also very important because we've been talking about this is the central repository, the central master data of all your process and quality parameters. Where actually do you use it? Now, this serves two functions. So first of all, you want to be sure that if you have an important standard, that it is also in the required uh, line documentation in, an, in a work instruction, also in a training, uh, maybe it is in your SAP or Oracle or whatever um, enter enterprise resource management system that, that you have. It depends a bit on how you want to uh, manage such parameters. Uh, I can also imagine that you put it in your preventive maintenance system. So you have a, a whole list here of the systems that you use. And then uh, in a document, of course, you put the document number there. So if you have a nice quality management system, document management system, and then you also put in there which documents, and these can, of course, be multiple, uh, mention this standard. So this way, you know that the standard is put into the systems that you use to actually run your factory, run your operations. But also, it means that when you change the standard, so um, and maybe you totally change it, but more often you change the value or maybe the bandwidth around or things like that. You know, you update this uh, based on new knowledge, new knowledge made by problem solving teams, by improvement teams, root cause analysis. Then you know that you have a whole set of documents and systems to go through. So um, what you don't really want, I mean, it's, it's an okay system, but not as good as this, is that the documents refer to one another the whole time. So that in one document, it is stated that um, the temperature of the seal, uh, the sealing station as described by reference document, seal station operations, you almost always get only a single uh, way of getting that information. So then if you change that master document, it doesn't automatically draw you back to all the child documents. So to say, it's an okay system, but it's very far from waterproof. If you put it, every quality standard, every setting that you have into this format and just keep this central, then you have this whole list of where did I use it. And this, of course, only helps if whenever you make a training or uh, an instruction document or uh, a machine reference guide, you also, when you put values in there, you go and check if these values are in the quality matrix, what are the values and exactly copy that. And of course, if you don't agree with what's stated in the quality management matrix, you probably have an improvement on your hand. So either you confirm, conform to what, what is in the matrix, uh, but more likely when this pops up, there has been a problem in this area. You check into the QM matrix, you see, hey, this value was already here, but, but the value that's here that actually was causing our trouble. And now you can update it here. You also get a reminder to always check how stable, how well do I implement this new value and what other documents or uh, maintenance systems or whatever is this value also in. So you update everything. That is the big strength of the quality management matrix. Now as to the management of the management matrix, um, what do you can do is um, if you have a large team, if you have a very small technology quality team, then this is not as important. But when you have, let's say, more than five or six or so people who want to put data into this matrix, which you will 
reach pretty soon if you have and a quality department and a continuous improvement and a couple of uh, engineers and technologists all working on the parameters in your factory then sort of make an owner of each standard you can add it also you know, who is actually the knowledge owner uh, or who is the owner of this standard but also what you do is you sort of split this out The top part, and then especially where is the what, what value do we have? This really belongs to the owner of each quality parameter of each cue point. So, when you are thinking about you know, security rules, this part try to sort of limit it uh, to the department or direct colleagues or uh, specific people who own this standard, and that really depends on your organization. I can. Imagine I would actually encourage when you have a high level of AM of autonomous management that the owner of all of these standards is actually the AM team of the area. But this is only um, th this will only work if you really have a very strong AM system in place where uh, your operators uh, already really own the line and are really involved in getting this quality management for their own area up and working. Also, very often you see that a whole number of especially more the, um, uh, let's say, the, the pure quality, uh, maybe uh, food safety, but the safety type of standards, they are uh, owned by the quality and uh, safety department. Uh, but if it is more about the technological set points, um, they are either in the engineering or the technology department. And uh, in such a way that you have sort of groups of owners. Now, the stability, basically, this is, um, this is an optional Part of the QR matrix to start with, but I would strongly recommend you do it. But this is very logical to sort of open up, open up to uh, teams who uh, go through our standards and uh, just judge them, check where we can improve. This is typical uh, quality pillar and, and basic quality team stuff. So open this up to uh, anyone who is going to do a small investigation into the stability of each of those standards that you have. And here, where do we have it? Well, probably you want to fully open this up. Now, removing stuff is always a little bit tricky, but basically anyone who can alter the types of systems that you have here should also have access to this because at the very minimum, what they should be very easily able to do is say, I put this standard into my SAP PM module uh, and it's now part of the preventive maintenance plan for our ceiling unit. If you block this, so if you for instance say well the uh, technologist is the only one who is allowed to alter uh, things like um, the heating set setting in the process because it's not really a, a quality critical parameter, it's really a process technology parameter, good decision. But if then your technical team, so uh, maybe one of your um, process engineers or reliability engineers uh, is doing a good job and they're uh, putting all of those parameters into uh, into the machine itself. So they program it into uh, product-specific programs. They also put it into their maintenance plan. They, they would check on it. And they're really strengthening your system. And then they get here and they are not allowed to put that this data point, this queue point, is in your PM module, is in the machine setting. You're just going to frustrate them and they're not going to fill it in into the system. So make sure that this system is easy to fill. If you want some control on it, control the top part with, let's say, specific owners for areas of, of what is uh, important in your operation. The stability part, basically open it up, maybe to the same as the ones uh, underneath, but open it up to a, a wide group of, uh, of colleagues, of uh, employees. And this bottom part, open it up to anyone who has the rights to make programs in machines, make instructions, uh, write quality reference manuals. Uh, anyone who is involved in your overall quality management system should have access here. Now, what you get by implementing this, maybe I should have started a video with that, but that is that you fix the standards that you have, you check how stable are they, which gives an immediate boost to, oh my, I didn't really think about is it easy to, for instance, see if this parameter goes offline? And you have this very nice 
a way of checking where is this standard being used and that prevents something that uh, definitely almost all uh, quality certification auditors will trip over which is that in one document you say that the temperature has to be um, between 170 and 180 and then there is this instruction to the operator that says it has to be 168 which is outside of the range and doesn't have a range and in the programming on the machine everything is possible as long as it is over 150 so stuff like that completely different ways of structuring it you well not 100 percent but 80 percent prevented by putting all those things into your matrix now this is not something uh, you're going to make in five minutes uh, this is quite a lot of work and also one of the things there is set up the system in a, a nice and accessible way and just start filling it and when you don't want to spend a lot of resources purely filling this matrix what i would uh, advise is that whenever you have an improvement team and you let that improvement team really check your organization for the standards that uh, that touch their quality area so they are working on something uh, and the running example here is they were working on this sealing station and the seal quality um, and during this work they've analyzed you know, the temperature they've analyzed how thick the foil should be how uh, much pressure how long uh, all uh, how long the heating step should should take all these things they have been checking also make sure that this team takes that relatively narrow area of the sealing station and make sure they have all those standards huh? they have that uh, the thickness they have that temperature they have that speed and pressure all into the qm matrix and make sure that such a team which is usually also a multidisciplinary team can also check you know what documentation do we have which instructions did we already write what did we put into the equipment uh, what's put into our maintenance plan and they have that access because they are a team they also have the focus uh, and then to them it's a relatively small step to update this if you as a quality pillar quality department make sure that your qm matrix is easily accessible and ready to receive new information now if you like this idea of having a qm matrix in place do hit that like button also please you know, tell me which other things maybe you've heard some term somewhere uh, in lean in six sigma in tpm being mentioned you're not awfully sure how to implement it do write me in the comments and I would love to make a video about that as well. Um, for now, I'm just going to wish you the best of luck setting up your quality management matrix. And as always, enjoy the continuous improvement journey.